Dual socket motherboards is another subject that people are constantly asking me about. This time I have got a question from a subscriber who wants to assemble a media creation workstation, and that's why he is asking to suggest him a dual socket motherboard. As far as I know, during media creation you need a high frequency CPU and low latency memory, because when you do work with your video or photo production, you need to make it interactive. You constantly change colors up and down, you shift something here and there, and if you're working with a 3D model and you need to turn your models and you want to do it in real time. In this configuration, your second CPU will be doing nothing, it will be resting in the system and will be idling, while the first CPU will be bottlenecking your performance because the CPU frequency is not high enough. That is why I always recommend people to get the fastest possible single CPU instead of a dual CPU setup. The dual socket solutions are designed for the workloads when you have some specific tasks which can be executed at the same time. For example, if you need to render lots of videos or lots of images, or for example, you need to process or convert from one video format to another video format, from one image format to another image format, and you have lots of such files and you can do them in parallel, then dual socket machine might make sense. In general, for general users, it is a waste of money and waste of resources resources to build a dual socket machine. Nevertheless, if you have such specific workload and you can efficiently utilize two CPUs with so many CPU cores at the same time, let's take a look at motherboards that you can find on AliExpress for some decent amount of money. Let's start with this Atermeter or Atermeter or ZX whatever dual socket motherboard. This motherboard is usually the cheapest one, but the quality is the worst. The motherboard is also limited to only two memory channels per CPU, thus, in short, I strongly recommend to stay away from this motherboard. The quality is bad, the features are limited, and if you can efficiently utilize many CPU cores, you obviously need high memory bandwidth, and with just two memory channels per CPU, you cannot get enough memory bandwidth, so this motherboard is completely out of the picture. The next motherboard that people are constantly asking me about is this Kinsha Dual F2 motherboard, because for some reason people believe that this is upgrade version from the Kinsha X99 Dual that I have reviewed before. As we can see, this motherboard is also limited to only two memory channels per CPU, and this is a very big disadvantage when you need memory bandwidth for your CPU cores. Even though the motherboard has got two PCI Express slots, this motherboard comes with a very bad quality. I have got this motherboard for a BIOS i engineer. Actually, I have got a slightly different one. I have got this one, which is Z8, which has eight memory channels in total, four memory channels per CPU. So I have got such motherboard for a BIOS i engineer to make BIOS, and the motherboard had horrible quality. There were some soldering issues, the chipset was damaged, and one of the memory slots died, so he had to fix all of that stuff. If you're technical enough, you have soldering station and you know how to fix such mechanical and electrical issues on a motherboard, sure, you can buy a Tinsha dual motherboard. Of course, not every single motherboard from Tinsha will be this bad, but if you're buying a Tinsha X99 motherboard, you're risking to get such a poor quality motherboard. That's why both of these Tinsha X99 Dual F2 and Tinsha X99 Dual Z8 are out of the picture, according to me. Then we have two motherboards from Huanangzhi. These two are basically the same boards. One is for DDR3 memory. This is X99T8D. This one supports DDR3. And the other one is X99F8D. This one supports DDR4. So far, these motherboards are the best from China that I have tested for two CPUs on X99 or LJ2011 version 3 platform. Right now, the motherboards are usually costing a bit too much. Uh, for example, this one costs about 200 euros, and this one costs even more than 200 euros. And if I would pick one, I would definitely go for the F8D, even though DDR4 memory might be a bit more expensive than DDR3 memory. But with F8D motherboard, you can pick a V3 and V4 Xeons, and you're not limited to only a few options which support DDR3 memory. 
And the last motherboard I have tested for two CPUs is this Teen UA X99 Dual or X99D8 motherboard. This motherboard is not bad, or at least the sample that I have got was not bad, but it also has its limitations. The VRM is not the best, and even though it seems to be okay quality, in the BIOS you will be missing some features, such as restore on AC power loss. So if that's important for you, this motherboard is not for you. In general, if this Teen UA X99 Dual can be found for significantly cheaper than Huanan G X99 FADD, you can go with the Teen UA X99 D8 or X99 Dual. Otherwise, Huanan G is a better option. You have three PCI Express X16 slots, one M.2 slot for NVMe SSD drives and one M.2 slot for SATA uh, SSD drives. With the Teen UA, you are getting the same configuration, three PCI Express X16 slots, two M.2 slots, but in this case, both of these M.2 slots are PCI Express X16. So in terms of features, they are very similar. And the last option that I found on AliExpress is basically a copy of this Teen UX99 Dual, which looks basically the same, but we can see that all the metal reinforcements have been removed from the motherboard. So this PCI Express X16 slots are not reinforced and the memory socket or the memory slots are also not reinforced. We can compare that these ones are reinforced with some metal bracket. I'm not sure if it actually makes any difference or no, but we can see the difference. So this uh, makes me think that this no-name version is produced at the same factory, by the same manufacturer, by the same technology, but they are paying less uh, attention to the quality control of this cheaper version. Thus, if I would be buying this option, I would go with the Teen UA X99 D8 or X99 Dual. By the way, if you would want to unlock Turbo Boost with your X99 dual socket motherboard, you have to use S3 Turbo Tool. Link will be available in the video description. And even though tutorial is in Russian, it is very easy to use Google Translate and get it done. So far, it's only S3 Turbo Tool, which is successfully functioning for Turbo Boost unlock on dual socket motherboards. Okay, and the other question I have got from this subscriber was about CLIS3 ECC registered memory. So I believe the question was about these memory modules, which you can buy from different stores. And again, I have to repeat that CLIS3 is not memory manufacturer. CLIS3 does not manufacture anything. This is an AliExpress brand, and they are stamping this CLIS3 sticker on basically anything. Even though you can see here CLIS3, it does not mean that this memory was produced by CLIS3. It is very well could be that this memory is just a PCV with a second hand memory chips which were scavenged from dead or broken memory modules, so then the quality might not be the best. But if the price is good and you are sure that you need this memory, sure, you can buy it, just make sure that you're gonna test it properly after you buy it, stress test the memory and make sure that it is working correctly. And if it doesn't work correctly, complain back to Aliexpress and either get your money back or get a replacement. It is also important to mention that China branded memory such as Clisre or anything else might be using Chinese memory chips which are produced on Nanya factory. This is not Micron, this is not Samsung, this is not SK Hynix, this is a Chinese factory which is actually producing memory chips themselves. These memory chips might be better, might be worse, but it is just important to know that if you're buying these China-made memory sticks, you can have two of them, both of them clear rail, let's say 32 gigs each, but one will be using Samsung memory chips and down the one will be using Nanya memory chips and they might not work together or the performance might be severely uh, degraded when you are using two different memory modules at the same time. And I hope this helps. My position towards dual socket motherboards is pretty obvious. I don't like them. It is better to get a single socket motherboard. But if you are on the market for a dual socket motherboard, then you get either Huanan G X99 FAD or this Teen UA X99 D8 or X99 Dual. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.